the 10 best American muscle cars of all time. I'm really excited to get into this video and check out some muscle cars. I'm pretty sure we don't get these in the UK at all. Maybe like people have them as like collective cars. I've never seen one in person. I've only seen them in movies and shows and stuff. So yeah, really excited to get into this. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. Let's jump straight into this and check out some cars. Hi there. It's hard not to smile when you see a classic muscle car. These powerful monsters were created to not only take you from one point to another, but also to deliver a thrilling ride full of heart-pounding pleasure. Okay. Big, yeah, that sounds heavy, crazy. loud, and rough, they're all the wonderful things in muscle cars that you should love the American automobile industry for. And Beautiful. in today's video... Aren't these the cars that literally make like the loudest engine noises? And it's just like, it sounds like it's roaring. You will learn about 10 legendary muscle cars, the appearance and power of which are amazing. Yo, this one's beautiful, bro. 1968 Woo! Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. The Ford Mustang cars modified by American racer and designer Carroll Shelby okay. were the cherished dream of every true Mustang fan. Released in 1965 and 1966, the Shelby GT350 and Shelby GT500 models were not only powerful, but elegant and light, perfectly light? suitable for traveling. After a couple- A muscle car being light, bro. These muscle cars are heavy as anything, bro. Yo, do you know what this video is reminding me of? It's reminding me of like a car game intro where you choose your cars. <laughs> And I've got on the muscle car session. I just reminded me of Need for Speed, man. A couple of years, the Shelby GT philosophy changed, and his cars actively participated in one sprint race competitions. Oh, okay. So under the hood of the 1967 and 1968 Shelby GT500 Ooh, look at that. was an engine with a capacity of 625 horsepower and a volume of 427 cubic inches. Uh, my engine don't look like this. What is this, bro? What are these pipes? Is that to make the roll? What, that, bro, what are these, bro? How much would one of these cars be? The, the engine is aligned with a six-speed manual gearbox designed for drag races. Oh, the increased wow. body length and more aggressive appearance of the car favorably distinguish the Ford Mustang Shelby GT500 from the 1965 GT350 models. The what, what, what model? 1970 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Chevrolet Camaro, the iconic American passenger car, manufactured by the Chevrolet division of General Motors Corporation. Why is it the iconic passenger car? Wait, wait, why is that? Cars of the second generation were produced from February 1970 to August 1981. Okay. The standard Sport Coupe model could be supplemented with the special design package Rally Sport RS or equipped with more powerful engines performed by the Super Sport SS. In parallel with the release of these modifications, a high-speed package was also released under the code Z28. No one advertised it or offered it, and it was not broadcast to the general public. Okay. But the Chevrolet Camaro Z28 model became the most famous for the entire existence of the brand. Package options for the Z28 included a special 5.7-liter engine with... Bro, these engines are mad, bro. Are like all muscle cars engines just like different, bro? Because my engine in my car, I just have a regular BMW, bro. My, it's just it's just a box, bro. It's just a box. 360 horsepower, spoilers front and rear, and coloring in the form of racing stripes on the hood and trunk lid. White for cars painted in dark colors. I and like black that. for cars painted of light shades. 1967 Ooh. Chevrolet Impala SS. The Chevrolet Impala is another iconic American full-size car yeah, manufactured badass. by the Chevrolet division of General Motors Corporation. Yo, you know what's crazy? I'm not a big car guy, right? Like, I don't know my... Di like, I know my basic cars, but I'm not like... You know what I mean? Like, you got the average guy. You just get a car. You just drive a car. You kind of like some cars. You kind of don't, you know what I mean? And then you got the car guy, bro. They know what the horsepower is. They know what it means. They... You, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not a car guy, but these cars are making me want a muscle car, bro. Like, I'm really liking these. You don't have to be a car guy to be like, wow. The sports modification Impala SS Super Beautiful. Sport was produced from 1965 to 1967 and won a crowd of fans. The body of the Ooh, 1965 like model was great by American standards and remained in service for a long time. 
but a 19. Bro, it just makes me want to join um, Too Fast, Too Furious, bro, and just race. <laughs> This is encouraging racing, man. Great by American standards and remained in service for a long time. But in 1967, it was restyled. The car received a more thorough sculptural study. The sidewall of the body was a bit smoothed. Their okay. lights were recessed into the grill and large turn signals on the sides. The oh, car I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. Look at this. This black one right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that one. The car began to look more harmonious and aggressive. The engine of the Impala 67 is also worth a look. It was a V8 with a capacity oh, wow. of 425 horsepower and a volume of 6.7 liters, which oh, wow. literally tore the asphalt from under the wheels. 1970 Chevrolet oh, Chevelle cool. LS6. When the company GM squeezed their previous requirements, prohibiting the Yo, I'm interested actually. How many people in America have like muscle cars? Is it like a very common car to have? All right, let me ask this. Comment below if you've ever owned a muscle car or if you got one now, you know what I'm saying? And if you have, hey, make sure to send me some pictures on Instagram, L3WG on I want to see. The installation of an engine of more than 400 cubic inches on medium-sized cars. In the American automobile industry, there was a real boom of muscle cars. Okay. According to most conservative estimates, the power of the LS6 was 450 horsepower. Wow. But according to some experts, due to the high compression ratio and the huge Holly 78 CFM carburetor, the actual power of the LS6 was close to 500 horsepower. Yo, that just sounds high to me. I don't know what horsepower means. Uh, bro, does that mean like 500 horses can push the car? Like really quick, like if 500 horses was going? Is that what horsepower? I don't, I don't know what horsepower is, bro. Someone, someone, um, give me an example of like horsepower to like miles per hour. That's how I work. I, I just work how fast things are from miles per hour, dude. <laughs> Employees of the magazine Car and Driver tested the car in 1970 and claimed it went from zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds. Oh, wow. How much faster do you think this car would be today with modern tires? True, that's mad. 1970 Plymouth Ooh. Hemi Cuda. Plymouth Hemi Cuda was not a full-fledged model, but a sports version of the third-generation Plymouth Barracuda with a huge Hemi engine. Okay. As befits a true legend among racing cars, not many cars could compete with a 1970 Hemi Cuda. Oh, really? It was distinguished by its classic balanced appearance and engine, the frame of which was no less than the car itself. I just like, bro, like the look of the cars from the side and the front like this is just, bro, they're so cool, man. Like, they are actually so cool. The heart was the legendary 426 6.9-liter block Hemi. Fully cast iron, it possessed two valves per cylinder in hemispherical combustion chambers. The valves were driven by a single camshaft, and the twin exhaust system helped to fill the full power of the engine. Right. The car accelerated to 60 miles per hour in a record 5.6 seconds, and the maximum speed reached was 117 miles per hour. Okay. 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge. In the early 1960s, Pon what is the exact reason for the nose part here? Right, they, they, they've all got them. Is is there is there is it to make it look cool, or is there an actual reason? Does it let out some of the engines? Like, like what, what what's going on here? Pontiac was the leader in the manufacture of muscle cars. Often, it's cool, the GTO though. is called the first muscle car. But by 1968, the car had too many competitors. Right. Then there was the idea to create a cheaper version of the GTO with a smaller engine of 350 cubic inches. Chief Engineer John DeLorme did not approve of this venture. In his opinion, the Beautiful. GTO could not have such a small engine. As a result, the new model was different from the traditional GTO. The judge was equipped with a 360 horsepower Ram Air 3 engine, but buyers could also choose the Ram Air 4 at 370 horsepower. Bro, imagine owning the muscle car called the Judge. Yo, what car do you have? The Judge. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, okay, buddy. The rarest was the Pontiac GTO Judge Ram Air 4 convertible. They oh, released only one. 17 models in 1969. Oh, wow. 1978 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. 
The 1970s for the muscle cars became a pale semblance of previous decades. Right. Rising prices for fuel and insurance have forced manufacturers to restrain their passion regarding super powerful cars. Oh, really? This affected almost all car brands, but not Pontiac. Their Trans Am has become a public favorite since Ooh. the release of the 1977 film Smokey and the Bandit. The 455 inch. Bro, this is what I'm saying, bro. This is why I think I'm smiling throughout this whole video, right? Because, like, yeah, I'm not a big car guy, but. I see these cars all the time in movies and stuff, you know what I mean? So it's just so cool. 77 films it's smoking so in the like, look, look right here. The 450. I, even I, I haven't even seen that movie, but you know what I mean? Like, bro, they're in all movies, man. Well, not all movies, but you, you know what I'm saying? There is so many movies. Since the release of the 1977 film Smokey and the Bandit. So cool. The 455 engine with a volume of 7.5 liters and a power of more than 370 horsepower which is deservedly considered the last of the number of legendary engines for the generation of muscle cars, oh, was really? installed in the Trans Am version. And the WS6 Special Package added wider 8-inch wheels, new tires, and very sharp steering to the car. Beautiful, As man. a result, the Pontiac Firebird Trans Am has become much more agile and faster on the track than the Chevy Corvette. Yo, now this would be a drive, bro. Like, being in this muscle car right here on this drive and just letting it rip... Wind down, would you wind down the windows? Is it, I, well, I don't know, I've never been in one. Is it better to let it rip when you're inside the muscle car? Or would you wind down the windows and then hear it even better? Like, I don't know, I don't know. But either way, bro, this would be something, man. The Pontiac Firebird yeah, Trans Am has become much more agile and faster on the track than the Chevy Corvette. 1969 Dodge Ooh. Charger RT. The Dodge... Wait. That name rings a bell. Is that popular now still? The Dodge Charger? That rings a bell. Why does that ring a bell? That really rings a bell. Yeah, yeah, it does. 1969 Dodge now? Charger RT. The Dodge Charger is the iconic American car produced by Dodge Division of Chrysler Corporation. Beautiful, man. In 1969, the Dodge Charger was slightly modified from the previous 68-year version. External changes included a new grille with a split in the center and new tail lights from designer Harvey Wynn. A new trim line called Special Edition was also added. In addition Badass. to further enhance the image of the muscle car, a new option package was added under the name RT, okay. which meant road track. The RT index was placed only on cars with high power. The Dodge Charger oh, wow. RT came with a 440 Magnum or 426 Hemi engine. 1969 Ford Mustang Boss 429. The what golden years of NASCAR came at the end of the 70s and the beginning of the 80s. Automakers were serious about racing and for the purpose of homologation, that is to participate in racing models, they should have produced at least 500 models, however, often producing models that were extremely dangerous for the streets. Oh, really? The Ford Mustang Boss 429 was a real beast. Its V8 429 cubic inches gave out 375 horsepower okay. and 6,000 RPMs. But what the means. engine was so massive that it did not fit into the classic engine compartment of the Mustang. Ah. <laughs> then Ford signed a contract with the company Carcraft to eliminate all interface. Specialists oh, wow. at Carcraft had to redo half the elements to make room and literally squeeze in the engine. Today at auction, the Model 19... Bro, how on earth do you get an engine that big that you, it doesn't even fit in a car? And this is a beefy car? Bro, if you if you start selling these in the UK, bro, they'll be some of the biggest cars in the UK, man. 69 Ford Mustang Boss 429 is sold for more than $200,000. 19... Whoa, 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 wait, is that because it's like a, a, like a, a rarer car? Or is that like... That, that car be standard prices for muscle cars, right? Dollars. What? 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. The Dodge Challenger is a cult car designed to compare with cars like the Chevrolet Camaro, Ford Mustang, and Pont Oh, I've heard of Camaro. That's what the uh, Jesse had in Breaking Bad, right? Cult car designed to compare with cars like the Chevrolet Camaro, so cool. Ford Mustang, and Pontiac Firebird. Coupe models were offered in four versions Challenger 6, Challenger V8, Challenger TA, and Challenger RT. The Challenger RT is a more powerful model with a Chrysler 383 Magnum V8 engine with a capacity of 335 horsepower. You know what though? The only thing I'm disappointed about with this video is we've not 
had any of the car sounds, right? I would really love, I don't know if you guys are the same as well, just to hear the roar, bro. I want to hear, <laughs> I want to hear it, man. Additionally, the RT was equipped with the Chrysler RB440 V8 Magnum 375 horsepower, Chrysler RB440 V8 six-pack 390 horsepower, and Chrysler RB426 V8 Hemi 425 horsepower engines. A lot of this. The Challenger RT was available in a coupe or convertible type body. Right. The coupe in SC version could be ordered with a more luxurious body, which included leather seats, a vinyl okay. roof, as well as a smaller rear window. And lastly, another yeah. great muscle car, 1969 Mercury Cougar Eliminator. Beautiful. This car was produced from 1967 to 2002. Oh, I like, I like the orange and black color. I like the colors black and orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that color was very nice. The year 1969 brought a few additions and adjustments to the Mercury Cougar. For the first time, the most productive package, Eliminator, appeared which in the basic configuration came with a four chamber carburetor and an eight cylinder 351 cubic engine. Yo, the engines are so cool looking, bro. It's like a disc kind of thing. It's like a barrel. <laughs> it's like a barrel and then some sort of stuff to lay out. The capacity of 290 horsepower. It was distinguished with a black grill, special bands on the body, front and rear spoilers, and a large air intake. The body was painted Beautiful. only in bright colors. Okay. That's all for today. Really Write in cool the comments video. which of these cars you like the most. Oh. And don't forget to put like if you like this video. I think it was, um, I think the one I like the most is the Dodge Charger. That is beautiful, man. I don't know, but it, it, it was also nice. I ain't gonna lie. But yeah, let me know in the comment section if you guys ever had any, if you've owned any of them. Really cool for me to check out since I only see these cars on movies and shows. So yeah, really cool video for me to check out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.